in my better hand. I caught my first tag fish. What's up everyone? Good morning. Welcome to Max's Stream River Fishing. This morning I'm out at Jordan Dam. It's mid-July. Let me tell you something. It kicked my butt this morning, but that's fine. I've had a lot of good days out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a crash course on how to fish Jordan Dam. Now let me go real quick into this. The best time to fish this is from late February to mid-May. Springtime, fish are running up here, all kinds of fish, even the catfish run up here after bait but let me tell you something the summer you still can catch them it's just not as great but when late september gets here october early november the fishing picks back up another thing is after a big flood this place floods all the time after a big flood it gets way up and it, i've got a flooding video on this thing i'll put a link to it somewhere um when it gets back down fish it because it brings in new fish that come from downstream they might get washed through the dam um, fish it right after a big flood as soon as it gets back not when it's flooding but right when it gets back down to normal after a big flood that's a good time to catch fish get here bright and early and chunk um, shiners or live shad i'll show you where to catch the shad under corks cast them upstream let them float down repeat cast them upstream let them float down um, you can catch um, crappy, bass, hybrid, stripers, catfish, all on that. That's the number one tactic here is bait on our court. You know, live shiners or small shad on our court. Um, let's get busy. Like I said, it's gonna be a crash course on it. I'm gonna go all the way around the dam and show you spots where you, and you can catch fish anywhere here, but I'm gonna show you what's the better spots, where to catch the shad and um, you can still catch them in the middle of the summer. Just had to get here bright early at daylight um, once the sun gets up. But anyway, spring and fall is best. Uh, but let's get busy and we're gonna take a tour around this dam. Okay guys, the number one tack is to stand on this pier and chunk up into that, the walls and let your bait float out. Cast it back up, let it float out. Now in the spring, when the water's higher, you can cast it out here, cast it out in the middle, let it float down to those riffles, reel it in, repeat. Just keep repeating. Now you can use lures, but now it's real shallow up here. So be prepared to lose a lot of bottom rigs if you bottom fish, or if you lose, or if you use lures, be prepared to lose a lot of them. So the number one tactic above this drop right here this little set of rabbits is to float bait on our cork. Cast up into that wall, let it float down, maybe in the here, reel it in, repeat. Now if you're right in here and you cast out, let it float down to there, reel it in and repeat. You can use lures off of this, but I recommend top waters, shallow running swim baits. Um, if you're after stripers, bass, hybrids, you have to crappy you obviously use smaller baits now the number one place to catch shad in a cast net is right here up against this end of the wall and right there just a little out from it but that's the number one place the number two place is probably right there below that rabbit and then maybe over there below that rabbit but that by far is the best place to throw your cast net for shad, without a doubt. Right there, you can see the spot better. That right there is where you want to be throwing your cast net. It's right there. That'll get you all. The, that will get you all the shad you need right there. Now you can catch crappie out here, same way, just throwing smaller jigs, smaller minnows on the corks. Um, at the end of that wall is a good spot for crappie and just inside of it uh, but anywhere up in that wall is good for stripers hybrids catfish um all that's good 
Okay, maybe you can see this good. If you're on end of the pier down here, the walkway, cast up into here and let it float down that wall. Crappy fishing, striper fishing, cat fishing, you know, just use bigger bait for which one, but, but have a cork. I like a popping cork, but have a cork. Um, I like a weighted cork too, but have a cork and put your line probably no deeper than two, two and a half feet. And like I said, at the end of that wall is a good spot for crappy too. And you can reach the end of that wall with a good outfit from this other bank I'm gonna show you. Uh, but that's what a lot of these guys at the end down here, they're casting up into here and let it float down, then they're repeating. Now guys, this little backwater area on the back side of this wall doesn't have any current. It's really shallow. Um, like I said, from the from the walkway over here, you can reach the end of that wall. That's a good spot for crappy or anything. Stripers, hybrids, there's not many hybrids, like I said, left in here. Um, but you can reach the end of that wall, but you can also reach the end of that wall from over here on the bank if you've got a good rod. So that's a good spot to cast right there from over here. Now this area from here back is really never good for much except one time of the year. There's a lot of small carp in this small shallow area, a lot of small catfish. Now I'm not saying there's never been a big fish caught out of here, a big bass or something, but it's not really worth spending your time on. Um, just a lot of small carp and small catfish this way because all the baits over there. Um, but it is good one time a year, late February, early March, the white perch run up the river and they're all out here. And even when the water's a little high, let me tell you something, you can get worms on a bottom rig, a, t a two hook dropper rig, and tell you something, you can load a bucket up a white perch right here in the very, very early spring. Also guys, let me feed what you can catch here. Um, big thing to catch here is stripers, certain times of the year. You can catch a few all year though. Um, white bass, white perch, um, there's a few hybrids in here. They come down mainly from the deep river. And I'll tell you about the deep river in a second. A few lakes way up the deep river, they come down the river. They hit the Hall River where they come together and form the Cape Fear and they come up the river. Um, but there's not many hybrids left. Um, so I've gone through the striped bass, white bass, white perch. You catch largemouth bass. I'm gonna tell you, there's a few spotted bass in here. I've caught them just a little downstream above the next dam so they're in here um there's no smallmouth bass there's some nice crappy brim shell crackers uh catfish there's channel cats there's white catfish um there's a few blues and there's some nice flatheads Let's see if i missed anything else that's probably the majority of it um i'm sure there's a few jack in here and different things but let's get busy over here to my other side and i'll show you over here Okay guys, now we're on the side that I really like. This is the side I fish 90% of the time. So let me show you this side. And um, you know, I may leave something out on this video. If you got any comments on what you do, um, leave it because I fish this spot sporadically now, probably two, three, four times a year is all, but I can tell you I pretty much lived here in the mid 80s. Jordan Dam was closed in 81. The mid 80s through the late 90s, I pretty much just lived here and fish you know what out of this place. Um, that was the heyday of it. But okay guys, I've already talked about this area back, just having small carp, small catfish most of the year. Except very early spring, you can catch a lot of nice white perch in there, especially when the water's up and the water's coming out of here and going back into there. Um, but right here, it's hard for me to see, but right here, you can, from down here, reach the end of that wall right there if you've got a good rod, light line for crappy fishing, um, even bass, um, whatever, you can reach that. But what I like to do is I like to get in about right here and cast a popping cork with a jig or bait on it up here, let it float down to this riffles. Reel it in, cast it up here, let it about in the middle you can do quarter way out halfway out if you're going more than halfway you're going to run into them guys over there but just repeat now early in the morning 
You can take chug bugs, pop ours, um, zero spooks, cast it anywhere out here, catch fish, bass, hybrid stripers. Um, if you're using a smaller, you know, lure like the pop or white bass. Now there is a rock underwater right in here. And there's one right in there that's really shallow. There's a lot of hangups. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of, I like a rattle trap in here too when the water's a little higher, but be prepared to lose them. You gotta run them fast and high. Um, so just be prepared. And now if you bottom rig, I suggest not bottom fishing any of this, especially when the current's higher because it's just gonna, it's just gonna hang you up. You're just gonna be prepared to lose a lot of weights and rigs if you do that. Um, but crappy fishing right here, casting small shad on the corks, um, bigger shad for hybrids and stripers. Just cast them out, let them drift back down. Cast them out, let them drift back down to there. Um, like I said, other lures, road runners are good, small jigs are good, um, rooster tails are good. Excuse me, just don't run them low, or you're going to lose them. Okay, guys, we're right below this set of riffles. This is one of my favorite spots to fish. This side is my favorite spot, above the riffles or below the riffles. Um, now this is all flat water from these riffles, 10 miles down the Buckhorn Dam. Four miles down is where the deep river comes in as Mermaid Point, it forms the Cape Fear River. Eight miles down from here is Avent Ferry Boat Ramp. And then another two miles down from Avent Ferry Boat Ramp, which is 10 miles from here, is Buckhorn Dam. Buckhorn Dam backs up water all the way to these riffles. So you can get a boat, and I've done it, all the way from Avent Ferry Boat Ramp all the way up to these riffles. But one thing I tell you is don't bring a boat, these these rocks, this riprap along the bank goes for another 200 yards maybe, 150 yards. Don't bring a boat up in these rocks because I'm gonna tell you, it's like being at the coast and being on a pier at the coast. You get a surfer or a boat too close to the pier, the guy's gonna start chunking lead at you because you got plenty of other water to fish. Um, stop below the rocks and anchor's fine. I used to do that, but I would not come up here here in these rocks. You can get a boat right there. Look, right below these riffles. I've seen it, um, but be prepared to eat some lead. Not from me necessarily, but I'm gonna tell you, I've seen it happen a lot. Um, so you can get a boat up here. This is all flat water to Buckhorn Dam. Um, but let's get busy and let's look at this part right here. Okay, here's the riffles. You can see them good now. When the water's higher, obviously they're washed out, but the water's about normal. Might be a hair low right now. I like to stand anywhere in here you can cast rattle traps out here. I like mini traps for white bass and white perch and crappie. Jigs, small jigs, road runners. Um, you can still float bait here. Cast it out, let it float back down. Reel it in, cast it out, let it float back down. Shad under a, a cork. Um, shiners under a cork. Just vary the size depending on what species you're after. Now obviously since Buckhorn Dam is 10 miles down, this does get deeper and deeper. So over here on the other side and over in here, the current actually really hugs more of this left side. So if you're gonna bottom fish for catfish, you're better off half between the riffles and the end of the rip wrap, probably about here down to there, bottom fishing for catfish. There's not as much current on that side. Um, but anyway, that's it. You can catfish good down here too. Um, that's good and you can catfish anywhere in here just be prepared to lose rigs i'd always have like a um maybe a good carolina rig with a flat sinker um whatever your main line is have your leader line a lot lighter so you don't lose as many weights um you may hang your weight up but if you hang your hook up at least you're not going to lose your weight um but anyway i've caught a lot of nice fish right here crappy hybrid striped bass large mouth, um, any of a few nice brim. So if you're doing bait, like I said, cast it out, let it float down, reel it in. Cast it back out, let it float down, reel it in. Now right here, you can only cast it a little ways out and let it float down a rip wrap, or you can just keep going farther out and let it floating down. 
um, but that's a good way to catch fish right here now early morning you can throw top waters um, any of those top waters and I'll put a list of them in the description every I'll put a list of all the lures I like to use here for the species um, but anyway this is a good view of this hey guys I hope you learned something on that crash course um, do me a favor get out here catch fish keep what you need don't keep more than you need um, don't leave your trash out here pick up track now i picked up a few things in line today i always leave it better than when you got there so i picked up some line today um, but anyway guys i'm gonna put a um put it in the description what lures i like for what fish um, and what bait i like for what fish um, but anyway guys hope you enjoyed it if you got any questions leave them in the comments do me a favor guys, hit the subscribe button, it's going to be right there, and I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.